The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 27th day of August, Tuesday. We're looking at the Dow at 10.08, uh, 10.06 a.m. Uh, trading. Oh, I just lost that. Let me get that again. Here we go. Looking at the Dow. Trading down seven at 41,233. was a little deeper to the downside earlier on. I suspect buying is going to come in. And it will be end of the week, maybe the beginning of next week, that we're going to become a little cautious. In the meantime, back at the ranch, we've got a leg B. If the Dow goes above 41,420, I've got to give you the decimals as well, 41,20.05. If it goes to 0 0.06 today, it extends us legs B. B. That will be outstanding because that means Wednesday could then be maybe P B. Thursday could be leg C, Friday could be peak C, Monday could be leg D, this, and then Tuesday could be peak D. And that would be the absolute quickest it could be unless today there's no new high, and that means we could be one day less than that. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is the uh, Dow. Look at the nine-period moving average, way above the, the price is way above the 14, uh, about the price of the Dow is right now way above the 9, the green 9 period moving average. The 9 is way above the 14. That's really positive. To turn that down into pink, you'd have to see the Dow down to about 40,300. Looking at the, um, that is about 1,000 points lower. Looking at the MACD, that's strong. Looking at the relative strength, that is nice. That's really starting to improve. The stochastic is flat at 94%. I love that. And uh, the on-balance volume is a tad overbought. So we remain long. We did this left side, right side price time mesh to this inside wedge target repellent line yesterday. Snuck above it for all-time high. Now we've got a new pattern that we've got to look at, and that will give us a little time. And I, I'm suggesting to you that it's going to be – today's going to be a little bit difficult because I suspect – from everything I'm looking at, that there is a chance that the Dow makes a peak B, doesn't go above 41,420.05. And yeah, we go to the S&P. Now, look at this. This is the S&P cash. It went to a leg C at 51.51.62 yesterday. It's pulling back today. It's down seven at 56.10.18. Now, what's really important about this is that you've got left side, right side price time match that goes to, uh, that's the 29th. 29th will be uh, two days' time. That'll be on Thursday. And that says that's when it should test 56, 69, 67. Anytime between now and then. Um, it could be a day late or so, but I'm just saying that that's the pattern that I'm looking at. And if you look at this cup formation, I forgot to extend it to the right. There it is, to the right. There it is. And you've got the inside track repellent zone. Today, that line is way up in the 56.38 level. That's asking you a lot for 27 points on the upside. You can get that. This is a period. Look, we've got um, end of the month buying. Any Anything can happen right now. Most importantly, you've got this V-shaped pattern that I'm going to monitor very closely because if it double tops, we've got to take note of that in the weekly chart. The monthly chart keeps going to this chapter. Wait, look at this. This is a long-term a long-term resistance line. This goes back to uh, the 66 low back in October, the no, March the 9th. It was Monday, March the 9th, 2009. You remember it came in a day after the Dow made its uh, major, major low. And now what we're looking at is the monthly chart. Look, oh, look, the 9 is over the 14. Price is way above that. The MACD is good. Stochastic is at 93%. That's and flat. That's fantastic in a monthly chart. Then you've got the on balance volume a tad overbought. This is still a very part. I look. I've got this. Someone asked me about it the other day. Here's the Obama years where the Dow was. This is just before the the low in March. This was this is a daily chart. This is uh, January the 30th of 2009. 
that's where um, in January, that's where Obama um, came in. And look what happened. It went from 66.79. Uh, that was the uh, it's a monthly chart. That, that is in March of 2009. And when he exited, he it was January of, oh, should have been January. I got February. Now, now I've got to move it over one. Yeah, January. January of 2017. Look at that. Up in the 2000, uh, I can't even remember what it is, 2,300 level. Then Trump came in, and it went from 2,300 to January of 2021, and that is 3,870. Very nice. And now we've got Biden who comes in at whatever I said, 3,870. I'm going to the high, 3,870. And here we are at 56.12. You know, it doesn't look Demo Democrat, Republican, Democrat. The market does its own thing. It's really very important to keep that in mind. I know that people talk about the history of uh, one party and the other. I just look at the chart and I say, hey, I don't care. Look, I've drawn in the, the horizontal line. Whatever happens in January, we'll see what's next. Meantime, back at the ranch. I wanted to go through the QQQ, which have been, they've been weaker. And they're struggling because the tech sector is really having a tough time right now. Down 34 at 475.02 on the Invesco QQQ Trust Series. Look, the monthly chart hasn't even got close to the left side, high of 503.52. And look at the um, monthly chart, peak C. If there's no new uh, recovery high, I don't see what we can do in the next uh, four days. You never know. I've seen crazy end of the month things, but so far it, it's going to take a lot to go from 475 to 503.53 to extend leg C. So in the meantime, back at the ranch. Um, so far it's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Hey, IWM had a, quite a dip this morning. It's coming back a little bit, but not much. It's down 230 uh, to 218.17. Uh, this has got quite a bit of a way to go to make a leg D at yesterday's high. So between the high of yesterday at 222.45 and the low today of 217.87, it's got a lot of work to do. But I think it's going to try, and we'll see what happens. Can it get to 228.63, uh, the left side high? The all-time high is 244. It's not doing that in uh, March. In August, I'm sorry. In August, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, the day is young. Let's go to the GC. This is the gold. Gold right now is down 3 Gold is holding well, and I know a lot of people said, oh, it's down the one-to-one. -one. This is it. No, I think that this is holding. Look, the price is over the nine-period moving average in the daily. The daily nine is over the 14. That's really positive. The MACD is good. Yes, the relative strength is weakening a little bit, but it's not weak. It's just weakening from what, where it was at that peak B. I'm calling it a B. I'm not calling it an alternate count. And the stochastic is at 82%. That's good. On balance volume is good. And the weekly chart, everything has, uh, um, yeah, everything's good. The MACD is not great, but it has extended. Uh, it's gone higher. And the stochastic is at 83%. This is nice. Leg C. And you, I can't tell you how many charts have made a leg C or, or a, trying for a peak C in the weekly charts. Let me just do this real quickly. Look, I and D, the Dow, uh, in leg C in the weekly chart. S&P, peak E, and now it's trying to get back. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 80, 80 at, uh, yeah, Dow's down 80, S&P's down 5. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. You can see by the E-mini futures that you're looking at, one minute chart, five minute chart, 10 minute chart, that there's a real fight going on between the pressures of moving higher and the pressures of, of pulling back. And uh, the other 200 period moving average has been stuck on this thing since 9.50 this morning, uh, just hanging around, but trying to lift off. It's, it's attempting to do that. The five minute chart's got a green nine period moving average. That should be a benefit. That should say that we're going higher. Uh, the um, 10 minute chart has not yet crossed positive. So we're going to be watching this closely. But I think there's just a, a tussle going on. That's what I said to subscribers this morning. You expect some kind of a kind of a whipsawing in, in a very narrow range whipsawing today. So let's go back to the let me tell you something. This is very interesting. Uh, I've been looking at the S&P and I've been saying, well, that's the S&P 500. But you've got the um, SPLV. And this is the here we go SPLV trading at 70.19 up a penny. Made an all time yesterday, did have a round number high three days ago. And this is the SP 500 low volatility fund at an all time high. So I, I have to tell you the more I look at the charts, the more I try to decipher it, the more I try to get rid of all the news. Just I, I read, I listen, I, I hear, I look, but it just it doesn't affect me at all. I'm stuck right in this, uh, this uh, venue that says keep looking at your indicators and believe in your indicators and all i can say is that yes the on balance volume is getting quite overbought but the stochastic and the splv is at 94 percent and flat it's holding really well i can't fight that and the uh, weekly chart says hey this is a leg this could be an alternate count it's either a leg f or a brand new b we don't have to make any decisions yet because it's more based on the uh, daily chart and the weekly chart broke out to a new all-time high leg c because it's an all-time high um i have to consider that it could still go to a d over a period of uh, a couple of months all right so um with that said i'm going to say my bias right now, for certainly for our for subscribers, is that we are long. We have certain positions. We kind of, in many areas, and the one thing that really has surprised me has been the DB Agricultural Fund, which we've been long since forty uh, since uh, the thirteens, uh, back in twenty twenty, and we've 
uh, periodically we've taken a little bit off, but we've kept a core position. And I keep thinking every time it goes down to the 23 or 22 or 21 area, you know, should we go long for some uh, new subscribers? Uh, because there's a good chance it'll have a rally, and it keeps rallying sharply to DEF. It went to 26.17 last time. Um, it pulled back to 22.79 on the 5th of August. Here it is, um, th three points higher, 25, uh, two and a half points higher at 25, and doing really nicely in leg D in the rectangle, uh, sorry, in this declining channel, and going towards the upper part. And that just says to me, you can't even rule out the DB Agriculture Fund because if you go to the uh, grains, look, uh, W, this is the first decent candle we've had in, in weeks at a low. And there's a turnaround. It's up seven and a quarter at five or five and a quarter. And because the stochastic's flat at 8.18, if the stochastic is able to, by, by Friday or Monday, actually touch the 12s or the 13s, finally you've got yourself a little bit of a rally going in week. But so far, uh, this is a continuous contract. It's not doing great, but it's a nice turnaround day. Soybean, nice turnaround day. It's peak A. This is leg B. <clears throat> this is a nice turnaround because you've got all the technicals starting to go in uh, together. And together in the sense that it's helping the weekly chart, but that weekly has to go above the candle of three weeks ago, the high that was right there. And that is the high of the week of the 16th. And that's at 1,002 and a half. And here it is at um, 987 and three quarters up seven. Um, it's got a long way to go. And look at that monthly chart, big arching over. Uh, but this is a nice turnaround. Look at this. This is corn. Corn, is, it's really struggling. It's a green candle today. But, wow, it's not very good at 365. Um, it really needs to get to 378 to break above the 14 period moving average. You say that's a trend trend change. So look at high-grade copper. High -grade, I'm going all over the show. Yeah, high-grade copper, leg B. This is nice action. For the first time, we're looking at it trying to push away for the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days that has touched the nine, the 200 period exponential moving average, working its way higher. This is important, and the weekly chart is finally just a little bit of technical improvement. If this can move further, you've got high grade copper finally breaking to the upside. I want to see the 4.30s. It's at 4.24 right now. I want to see the 4.30s sometime this week and holding. That'll be really good. Okay, we want to look at uh, the TLT. TLT uh, pulling back a little bit. Now, I need to do this. I had some questions. I'm going to go through them one at a time. So um, I had a question about NVIDIA. Hey, Basil, if you receive this note, I know you work yourself very hard, so if you cannot divert attention, no problem at all. However, after listening to Larry P. and Jeff Hughes interview today, um, I was looking at September puts on NVIDIA. So um, this came at 6.10 last night. Actually, I was right at my computer doing work, as always. Uh, I saw it a little later than that. And... Um, yeah, so I did get it. Now, uh, uh, let me go through this. I was looking at September puts in NVIDIA, but even better, maybe a strangle is the indication. I remember once prior to an Amazon earnings, how obvious that trade would have been. Big move that sticks is the only, uh, a big move that sticks is the only required. So maybe on Tuesday's show, you entertain the idea and show the setup. Personally, if I did get the strangle, I would simply purchase an equal number of puts and calls at the current price as two separate order entries, or maybe to cost less out of the money a bit, but symmetrically, respectfully, Larry. So, okay, this is what I'm looking at here. I've got NVIDIA. Now, let's just forget about this. This is what I like to do. Oh, darn. While I was talking there, I didn't get back in. Oh, I got out just right there, and I thought, okay, green, 9 p moving average, looking good. Ah, oh, very nice move to the upside. And still only a leg A in the 10-minute chart, leg B. No, this is leg C. Very good. So this is your C in the – okay, let's get rid of that. 
I'm sorry, I got distracted. I got distracted for a good reason, because my bias was to say, buying coming in today, everybody's so negative, we should see some rally attempts. And this is it. All right, we've already used up one. I thought I'd get into another, and I've missed it. All right, doesn't matter. Yeah, we go in video. So let me, I like to do this. I like to say, regardless of whether there's earnings report or there's a news event or a new product announcement, I don't care. I like to just do the homework and say, Regardless of the event that's coming up in two days, what would I be doing with NVIDIA? Well, it's just made a leg D, uh, maybe a peak D, uh, that, and the earnings come out on the, the 20... Uh, wait, why did I put H724 earnings? I think I've got that wrong. I think it is... I've got it in front of me. Wait a minute. NVIDIA. Oh, there's the break. Uh, NVIDIA is... Yeah, I, th I believe it really is Wednesday afternoon. I'm, I need to check on that. But in the meantime, I want to do the work as if there weren't earnings coming out. And I'll explain why in a minute. How about Japan? Dow is down 30. Uh, 30. S&P is up 3. 2.5. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made it so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I need to just uh, clarify, it's a long time since I, I, I used to do options a lot, but just straight puts and calls. That's all I did, because like, if I got the trend, it was great. Um, I didn't do anything complicated. Once in a while, I did. Um, so I'm going to just say, uh, first of all, Larry, in the, in the Tiger YouTube, Jeff says, um, strangle NVIDIA, no, paying expensive premiums on both sides. You see, and that's what I was looking at last night. I didn't look at the options. I just knew that they must be very expensive right now. So it's really tough for me to, to, to make a decision on that case, in, in that case. Um, and then he goes on to say, chance of profit near zero. Uh, should be selling the strangle. Uh, back later. Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. So I, I'm going to take that into consideration because it's something that was in the back of my mind, but I just haven't done it for ages. So I, the, 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 the whole technical aspect is I just... It's now become foreign to me, something I, I did know, but I'm just I'm not just not used to it. So I'm not comfortable. I am absolutely comfortable with the idea of puts and calls. But I'm going to say um, uh, and then in the den, uh, Dan says, um, selling strangles near unlimited risk. I, I'm going to suggest something else. So um, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, look at NVIDIA. From the action that you're seeing right now, and that, that uh, right there. So now you can see what, what we've got is a situation where I could, in fact, go like this and put in and say, hey, this could be Chapman Wave stalk leg formation right here. Yeah, there's no reason why not. Everything fits. It hasn't taken all that much time, but at least it's good done the pattern. And what I'm looking at, if there was no um, question about something being stated in the next two days or so about anything, I'm just looking at the chart and I'm saying the bias right now is to go above the peak D of 13250. Was it? Was it 100? 131.26. 131.26. And the downside, because the nine period moving average is still strong, looks to me like there could be a dip and then it would come back. So let's look at it in a different way. Let's look at it and say NVIDIA was the leader of the semis uh, all the way through to the high that was made at 140.76. And that was uh, the week of the 4th of June. It pulled back. It's got a falling axe formation. It's broken above it for two weeks. The week is still young. Anything can happen. But it's showing strength. The MACD is not is weak. Cassic's weak in the weekly chart. And uh, the on balance volume is a little bit weak. Not it's okay. But um, the nine over the fourteen is fabulous. So I'm a fr I, I would be hesitant right now to overpay for premium. That's all I'm saying. That's number one. So now let me look at what would happen. Let's just say that today is up a dollar at 127.58 for whatever reason. Let's just imagine that tomorrow it gets close to 130, the, the 130 strike. What I would do is I would prefer not to take this exorbitant risk and wait for a trend change. And that would be either the day of or the day after the announcement. Why? Because if NVIDIA... Closes under 122.50 is the 14 period moving average. But if it closes under 127 points in a stock like this to the downside, eh, that's nothing. Just as seven or 14 points to the upside is nothing. But in the mo at this particular point, I would, this is, you asked my opinion, I'm giving you the analysis. The analysis says based on the chart, there is nothing negative other than in your mind. It could be negative earnings, and you could be 100% correct, but on paper, there's nothing yet negative. On the weekly chart, it's broken above the resistance, and that's a positive. The MACD is disappointing, the stochastic is disappointing, but that 914 is very strong. So I'm 
I'm not the one right now to be able to give you any advice based on options on what to do other than to say if you're feeling really negative rather than waste a bunch of potential fantastic gain, it's going to be really hard under these circumstances with the premium. I can just imagine what the premium is today and even worse tomorrow. I'm just going to say, where do I think the stock is going? And I'm going to say to you, um, if there is a close under 120, then I would suggest to you that the upside is very limited over the next two, three weeks. That's the only way I can put it. And if there's a break and it closes above the high, uh, let's even just say it closes over 134. On So if it's a Wednesday, the, 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 um, I couldn't find it here. I believe it's tomorrow. If it is tomorrow, if NVIDIA comes out with earnings tomorrow afternoon and by Thursday, it is not, I can't find it on this list that I've got in front of me here. Yeah, I, I think it's tomorrow. Anyway, if it is tomorrow, you have to give it a whole day. The next day after the the, the, the conference call, you know, the assessment, the analysts, whatever it is, by 10.30 the next day, you're going to get a real good clue. And then I would start looking at what to do. Because I think that if it pops up, then the put premium is going to shrink a lot. And that might be where you want to look. And if it uh, drops, the call premiums, and I, I suspect it's not over for NVIDIA. It's a fantastic company. It's in a different category. It isn't in the kind of fundamentals of a GE or something like that, or even a Caterpillar at this point. It is in a different area, an area that you can see by the SMH is slightly up to date, 96 up 96 cents, 243, 53, kind of stalling. And that to me says that the semiconductors over the next six weeks or so, I've got to watch them really closely because if they start to lag, where the semis go, the general market goes. Wow, I didn't. I could have said that much quicker and said, you know, Larry, I don't think I'm the guy. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you, based on everything I'm looking at, NVIDIA is holding well. Um, I, I suspect even if there's kind of a bad news outlook, it has to be really bad for this thing to start going under 115 and staying there. I think there's enough there's enough buying to say it's in play. And that's all I can say. I'd rather say if I was long, I'd be taking a little bit off right now as um, protection. I'd raise one part of it. I'd raise a stop on one part of it. And I'd try to hold it as long as I could. All right. I'm sorry it took so long, but that's the way it is. Then a question came in earlier on about VFC. Now, I can't remember what it said. I'll try to find it. But v VFC, that's uh, the apparel company or group, um, had a very nice move up to 18.86. They made a cup formation. Um, it's trying to get back. Yes, the chapter we've inside track dash green. green. I'll try to find the exact question in a moment. Dan, Dan. Um, and it's it's just kind of stalling here. I suspect it will try to get to a leg D above 18.86. How it does it is the question. I'll try to get to that in a few months. There it is. Uh, please speculate in the next three to six months. Okay, I'll, I can do that. I'll be back in a moment. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. 
Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. How goes the VFC Group apparel? We're looking at it at 17.73 up two cents. If this little struggle now, it needed big candles to get back to 18.86 in this move right now. So the day is young, the week is young. I want to see by the end of the week, I want to see that weekly chart get you at least into the the wick of uh, three, four weeks ago, which will be at 18 point, 18.21. If we can get to 18.21 any time this week, just has to touch it. Doesn't even have to, to uh, break above or close above it. Just has to touch it. And that'll say, oh, great. Now we've got the 18.86 in line for uh, August, maybe even to the first week of September. But if it starts to fan and it goes to 17.21, that's going to stall. Now, the reason why I took a little time on this, even though the question is about the next three to six months, the way I'm looking at it, this is a micro. This is a microcosm of the weekly chart. The weekly chart is a microcosm of the monthly chart, which is a horrible chart. I mean, talking about an, a, a, a stock that was up at 100 and one, 100 point, what is it? 100.23, double top, 100.25 back in December of 2019 and then 2020, January. And then what does it do? It just takes a dive and comes to the low that was made just the other day. And that is at 11.82 or something. No, 11 round number low. I didn't realize it was a round number low. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> 11 round number low okay and now it's trading at 17 six points higher wow uh, almost a 50 percent gain very nice so looking at it in the in three months time first of all let's just be real clear in three between three and six months at any point if it if it closes under 11 i'd even say if it closes under 12 it's a real problem but under 11 forget about it it's in real trouble now with that said the way I'm looking at it, you see the way the pink nine period moving average in the monthly chart is just starting to flatten it. In other words, 
the uh, aperture, the distance between the black line, the 14 period moving average, and the pink is starting to narrow. See where the MACD has gone positive. The histogram uh, about uh, six, eight months ago went positive. It's not a great chart pattern, but it did go positive. And you see the way the stochastics is worming its way up to 29% away from the uh, teens, and the on-balance volume is rallying. So all of that says it's a work in progress, and VFC is on the shorter term, I'm talking about the monthly charts, the shorter term goes to the intermediate term of the um, weekly chart. I just need to scroll this far. And that weekly chart has two challenges. Can it get to 1886? Um, and if it breaks above that, when will it get to 20.69, the high of December of 2023? My suspicion from the speed with which we're moving up now is that speed is, in fact, the issue. So if in by the 8th of September, ah, let's give it to the 15th of September. If Let me just check the weekly chart. So that will be exactly. So that will be the 13th. By the 13th of September, that's the second Friday. If... There's been a push towards the 1886 area, and you've actually closed above it. That says that the daily chart could have recycled because the MACD should then be green, finally positive. I mean, it should be positive. The stochastic should be at not 40%, 49%, should maybe, maybe at 78%. That's a good sign, close to 80%. That says your, your intermediate term chart, the weekly, is starting to improve. That weekly chart, the stronger it gets, the greater the, the speed with which that pink nine-period moving average can cross positive. I think it's either going to take uh, two or three points in VFC to do that or time or both. So I'm looking at this as a slow process. I'm pleased to say three to six months. What I'm going to say is I don't care whether it's from one month from today or six weeks from today. That 20.69 high from uh, February of 2023, that has to be taken out. Once it's taken out, you can go step by step. So the question is, where do I think it will be? It, it has to meet those parameters. It certainly has to hold uh, 15 as support over the next week or so. It has to push high. It has to try to get into the high 18s. And then all of a sudden, everything is on track. Market conditions are going to be involved as well. Why? Because it's in the apparent. It's in the the consumer base. So there's a lot of things going on. So those are the things that I would look for. I don't know if I'd even be able to do a, some kind of an option contract that goes out into February, say, um, January or February. I, at this particular point, I would have to wait for the month to close. That means go to Friday. And I'd love to have the first week or so of September. And then I think I'll have a really good clue as to projections that I can make more price than time and then we'll see. So I don't know if I even helped you there. Oh, that was a lot of talking, right? Okay, next question was race. So this is going to be interesting. I showed this the other day. This is Ferrari. Why wouldn't it be Ferrari? At an all-time high, as we speak in leg E, um, we're looking up nine points at 488.85. Leg C in the – see, so many charts. I've got leg Cs in the weekly chart. That's why I think we're going higher. And the monthly chart, leg E. So Ferrari – I can't remember what the question was. Oh, just, just have a look at Ferrari, yes. But have a look at Toyota Motors. Toyota Motors has had a nice move from the low under 160 to 185. Look at Ford. Ford – um, has had a nice move, but in the monthly chart, ugh, it's still in this rectangle. It can't get out of its own way. Look at General Motors. So I'm suspecting that General Motors, I don't know what the reason is. I can guess because I think uh, it was a Mary Barra, I think that's her name, um, has said something about um, – having a combination, giving people a choice. And at this particular point, it really looks like people's choice is what? Is not to go all electric. And i that's what I've read. I, I was with someone the other day when we were going to Tanglewood. We, we got a, a friend gave us a ride uh, in a hybrid Venza, a Toyota Venza. That's a really nice car. 
And uh, and all I can say is I can understand hybrid makes much more sense at this particular point, and then you can make a change and go all electric if you want. But having some kind of uh, gasoline-powered motor at this point, I think is still quite important. Okay, so looking at General Motors, this is a very nice-looking chart. It's the only one that's doing this. Probably making a V-shaped pattern going to the previous high of 50.50. There's a 49.28. I'll be right back. I was done 20. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, thanks, Ed. Yes, uh, VFC announced a major restructuring in Q124. Since then, sold a non-core brand. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's in the charts. Uh, correct. So I think you're looking at something very different right now, but it still needs price movement, and those are the prices that I'd be looking for. Um, next question was, where, where did it go? Oh, yeah, so General Motors, uh, what's the anticipation? That 50.50 with a round number 50 open on the 21st of July before tumbling down to the 39 level, very nice comeback. If this leg or the next leg goes above 50.50, that means that the buy mode is intact and that General Motors should go to a leg D. That implies that um, that peak D that was made in the weekly chart will then be called an E. Could be called an E, brand new A, but I'm going to be conservative to call it an E. But what will happen is that the monthly chart, uh, which is in leg B, if it's this month, if it's the next few days, 
uh, that'll extend lag B. That'll be part. This is one of the better looking charts. If you want to just really quick look, quick look at Tesla, Tesla right now. This is just stalling. Remember, I said it's stuck in a range. The 200 period exponential moving average of 208. That's it's like it's like a magnet. It wants to keep pulling it back. Is that eight or six? Two o. Oh, let me just do this quickly. Two o six. That's just like a magnet. So I can bounce around, but I think it's just stuck in this range. Now let me just real quickly. So the Dow right now has come back very nicely. It was down a hundred something before. Now it's just down eleven. I suspect that we're going to higher highs, and that by next week on the Dow. We will get our peak D, and then we have to make decisions on what to do. The S&P is already at leg C, probably a peak C for Congo, above 51, 51.62. Hey, the day's young. There's still buying that keeps coming in like waves. So I'm very positive all the indices up until next week. And then we'll see what happens. Doesn't mean I get the negative. I'm just saying right now, I'm still positive. We are still doing some buying very selectively. And it sometimes is working out very well. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back.